Hey guys, well today I want to do a follow-up video on the Emacs Tiny Hawk because there was a couple things that I did not cover in my initial review that I feel are really important and I should be discussed. First of all, I did not mention where the bind button was. I, that's something I had already found, but I just forgot to mention it during my initial review. The bind button is this little bitty. It's up under the front um, left prop if you're facing as you were sitting in the drone. And you just have to press that in and you know a little screwdriver you can probably wedge up in there it may be your fingernail i think i was able to use my fingernail hold that in while you plug in the battery and have your controller in bind mode and you're good to go so that's something that some people i know are having trouble finding the bind button because uh you know you may think oh the bind button is probably this button here next to the usb port well this is actually for switching to video tx so that's not it. It's too bad it's not because that's obviously much easier to access than the one up underneath you know, the board here. So that's where you get the bind, uh, find the bind button. The other thing I didn't mention is this drone has some preset um, uh, profiles in the PID tuning of Betaflight. Uh, I was not aware of that. It's something I've never seen before. I understand from what I've heard from other people it is not that common. But it's nice that Emacs included that because the default profile is kind of a beginner's profile. As, I'll, as you'll see here on the screen, I may have already put it up. You'll have, I have some video recordings from Betaflight to show where that is. The, uh, the beginner profile is what I would call rate one. You know, profile one is like a beginner's profile, and that profile was only set to 25 degrees pitch when you're flying in stabilized mode. Now, in mine, you may see it says 40 because I had already bumped it up because I was messing with that screen and didn't see the, those profiles. So there's three profiles. One is your uh, like your noob or your beginner's mode. And then you've got six rate profiles up there. I'm going to test out uh, profile two and set the rate profile two. We'll see how that works. I know flying at line of sight, it obviously had the 55 degrees pitch. We'll see how that works with the camera because the camera no, it's not adjustable. So I worry if you're flying that a lot, you could be looking at the ground. We'll have to see um, how that works. So I don't know how it's going to fly in acro mode. It definitely seems sportier, but it may still, you know, not be quite enough because you know you're you're using a a one S lipo on this, and uh, it's just tough to get a lot of power fly ac acro out of one S. We'll see how it works. I'm going to put some video. I'll do some line of sight first and then we'll try acro hopefully i can get some footage but you know if i try doing flips and, and uh, rolls and it still bottoms out on the ground well you know and then i don't know what to say you know after all this is just a 1s whoop so you can't expect it to be overly powerful when flying it in acro mode but it's a great little whoop for flying around the house so like i said we'll see how it works flying it that way i just i haven't tested it out before this review because it's so bad about throwing props and if i lose a prop Look kind of silly sitting here with a prop or two missing off the drone. So be uh, mindful of that, as I mentioned in the initial review, that you know you can lose props. They should be readily available really, really, really soon. But right now, it seems that they are not so easy to find. But then it won't cost much either. But I wish they just would have gone with extra props in the kit and, and, a, and a better design. One where they actually would have screwed down the props. That would have been so much better because you're not going to lose props if it were designed like that. All right guys, so that should cover everything for this little uh, revisit here that I wanted to discuss a few things that I missed. So let's move along outside and we'll do some line of sight first and then hopefully some onboard acro footage. Be right back. All right guys, so I'm gonna take the Emacs Tiny Hawk out now for a second test flight. This one using uh, Profile 2 and Rate Profile 2. Now there's other profiles that I've not tested, so there's probably ones in it that might be a little sportier than this one. I don't know. There's so many different combinations you can do considering that there's also six rate profiles. So first I want to do a little line of sight here just so you can see the, for one, the increased pitch, and it seems like it's a little sportier using Profile 2 and Rate Profile 2. So let's go ahead and set it down on the ground here. I've got it in angle mode, uh, you know, so it's in stabilized. So I'll just show you that. So let's go ahead and take off. Go ahead and unlock the props. For one, the yaw is much, much faster too. If you remember in the initial review, the yaw was about like that. Really, really slow. So I highly recommend if you're an experienced flyer uh, that you increase, you know, these rates of the a different rate profile. Here is the pitch. 
See, look at that. That's like the snapper seven, 55 degrees. Much quicker that way and much easier. See the roll? You're able to get out of the way of stuff much better. So even if you're just gonna fly this thing by FPV indoors, you're gonna be able to get out of the way of things much easier on this rate profile two. Rate profile three has the same 55 degrees, so it just has slightly different tuning than rate pro than uh, excuse me than profile two. So yeah, I like this much better. The first one is, it's still serviceable. You know, I, my FPV video from the first review indoors was shot using rate profile, excuse me, profile one, rate profile one. And it was fine, but you're gonna be able to get out of the way of things better using this. Let's do a throttle punch here and see how that is. I don't know if we're gonna be able to tell a whole lot of difference between that and the first video. Seems about the same to me. It might be a little bit better. You know, when you're when you're working with the drone like this on one S, you know it's just uh, it's handicapped a bit with the one S. Oh, boy, it's pretty sporty. It does remind me quite a bit of the Snapper Seven. Now the way that it flies. Like I mentioned a while ago in the table review, uh, table uh, overview part here, I didn't. Uh, I've not flown this in Acro yet, so I don't know. Even even flying at full pitch stabilized really is what I'm getting at. Is I don't know how uh, the camera is going to be flying stabilized with that much pitch since the Snapper Seven you can adjust the camera and this one you uh, you're at a fixed angle. So we'll have to see. I'm just a little concerned at 55 degrees flying like that could be end up making you look at the ground. But this is a lot more fun. That was one thing I was a little bit critical of in my initial review was because it was seemed like a beginner whoop almost. It flew great, but it just wasn't real agile and quick. And uh, with the presets, obviously I knew that stuff could be changed in beta flight, but I'm not real, real good at beta flight, as I'm sure many of you know. So I knew how to change the pitch angle, which I did. And I had it set at 40 in my review. But I, I like 55 better. Now that cutting out means the battery's going dead. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the motors. All right, that was flying, now that was actually using my battery for my Snapper 7. It, um, they're pretty much the same batteries, though they say they don't have as high a C rating. So I'm gonna use the stock battery here now and we'll take it up and see if we can get any kind of, you know, acro footage. I don't, I get, like I said, I don't know how it's gonna do with flips and rolls. It may not be any better, but uh, we'll see how it does now using profile two and rate profile two. So I'll be back here and we'll have some uh, onboard footage to end out this video, guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. Dark side.